Hello and welcome to the Arrow Digital Strategy Hotel podcast. We've had a break recently, but now we're back with the first in a series of short podcasts in which we talk to thought leaders about how to get your hotel to oversubscribed. That is the very desirable situation in which demand for your rooms exceeds your supply. So today I'm talking to Lisa Leahy and Seamus Crotty. Now a management consultant, until recently Seamus was group general manager for Sheen Falls Lodge, Castle Marta Resort, Trinity Townhouse and Tull Farris Resort. And prior to that, he was the general manager of Sheen Falls and also spent five years in Hayfield Manor as deputy general manager. Hello, Seamus. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Richard. Welcome. Um, also an alumni of Hayfield Manor, Lisa was Director of Sales and Marketing for the Hayfield Family Collection, which includes Hayfield Manor, Killarney Royal and the Great Southern Hotel for 17 years and then left to set up her own marketing consultancy specialising in hotels. Hello, Lisa, and welcome. Greetings from Cork, sunny Cork. <laughs> ah, it's always sunny in Cork, eh? <laughs> Thank you both for joining this podcast, which is uh, an adjunct to our recent blog, Top 10 Tips on Forward Planning for Autumn. The link for that will be in the podcast description. The gist of it is that hotels should be planning now for how they will fill their rooms come autumn. And with Seamus and Lisa, we're going to expand on this and get real world insights from them. So, Initially, then, I suppose we should define what we mean by the autumn season. Um, is it the end of summer up until Christmas? Um, you tell us. It's one of those things that uh, everybody has a different definition of, actually, I suppose. To to me, I suppose, uh, depending on your location, it's probably the end of August. You can di- feel free to disagree with me, Seamus, the end of August. September, October to me is 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 autumn. I kind of like I know August is technically is autumn, but you've got the summer holiday season and then that normally changes the last week of of August. So that's where in my head it sits. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'd agree. Lisa. I think, um, you know, kids going back to school, that type of uh, uh, rose the tree on the TV. <laughs> that sort of last week of <laughs> August is where your occupancy drops off and suddenly you kind of realize, okay, it's uh, the summer season is gone now. So I think, yeah, that, that I think particularly the last week of August, we found in seasonal properties, um, uh, more so the regional properties in the city hotel, that that last week is when it really mm. kicks in right through, I think, Richard, as you said, probably November, yeah, for sure, November, uh, whether or not you call November winter or not, but yeah, they would mm. be, yeah, autumn, autumn moving into winter in November. And I was going to ask next, and I think you've partially answered it anyway, is why is this period a challenge for occupancy? I mean, I guess at the end of the summer holidays, things can fall off a cliff if you're not careful. Yeah, it depends on, sorry, I'm just going to talk over you again, Seamus. You're used to that working with me at Hayfield anyway. Yeah, go Lisa. (laughs) what I was going to say, it, it depends on your location. Like, I mean, I suppose for a city a hotel in London, it's probably when things kick back off again. Um, but I suppose in, in terms of our more recent experience uh, for myself and Seamus, it's probably more kind of uh, regional properties that would be, uh, you know, tourist reliant in the in the summer months. So, um, so yeah, it's it's it it, it, tend, it it's just a change in business and I suppose what you don't what you don't want to do and the, the idea of doing things now in June is that uh, you're getting ahead of yourself for for autumn you should always be working three months ahead at least uh, and building your base putting all your campaigns in in uh, in action at that stage so that when it comes to the last week in in August and the business severely changes which it probably does for all properties really that you're you're ready. Um, so I don't know if that answers the question, Richard. Yeah, it does. Um, partly, but then once you go from the summer holiday, say at the end of August into September, I imagine that, for example, retired people who don't want mm. to be around when there are loads of families in the hotel 
think, oh, this is a good time to go. Um, but still, you know, they probably don't provide enough business for, to fill you, you know, through September, October and November. So, yeah, I, that's partly the challenge. But, you know, have you got any other things you can think of, Seamus, around challenges for filling rooms in that period? Yeah, like Richard, I actually, I don't mean to complicate it now, but I would, um, Lisa's right, like you're going from the summer period into the autumn, but I would traditionally in my mind have broken down autumn into two sections where you have September, which generally can be, as you just referenced, a good month, not your summer 80, 90% occupancy sometimes, but certainly a good month in terms of occupancy, stronger ADR than the latter half of the year. And then the second half of autumn is, you know, you're into your October, you have a little peak for um, your bank holiday weekend for Halloween, and then it drops back off again in, in November. So definitely it's, 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 if it, there are three steps going from here, high season, drop for September, drop again uh, for your October, November period. Um, so I think once you define them clearly and, as you said, the segments are a bit different there as well. Your families are gone and you're into that leisure. Can also be a good international leisure month in September. And then, you know, maybe, I don't know, 75, 25 in terms of mix. But then when you get into your October period, you really are back into your, you know, domestic leisure. Mm -hmm. Maybe your corporate's coming back as well. That Generally, you don't see many then in September. Um, and if you might be back into some conference season as well. So it, the business mix shifts quite a bit over those really six to seven week period from last week of August into your second week of October. Yeah, that's interesting because that really means then that hotels need to be agile, mm. you know, be ready to, to shift the mix to look at different segments. I referenced the blog that goes with this podcast. Um, and the first point actually in the top 10 tips is before you do anything is to actually look back at last year. Mm. Um, and again, that feeds into a, a planning yeah. um, element. Um, if, you know, what worked for you last year, what didn't work for you last year? Do you think that's a, a, a vital part of the process? Yeah, I think it's a, uh like looking looking back i suppose a lot of a lot of hotels now will have automated systems that will give them that that information but you know uh they're only sometimes as good as the information that is put into them so sometimes you know your own human knowledge that you know there's a big american match taking place this august so it's going to be completely different to to next august um you know you're watching what's going on in the area so definitely looking back is essential um but also looking back, realizing that every year is different as well. There are some patterns, but there can be things that are going on in the marketplace that mean that your, you know, your your August, September, October this year is going to be very different to to what you had in place last year. But it's a great place to start, I would think. What do you think, Seamus? Yeah, definitely looking back and getting an idea of, of the trends. Um, and looking back now, Lisa, you made reference to three months out. I think that's the key, you know looking now and seeing well what was last september october november like what was the business mix and if you can get that from your pms the breakdown by nationality by rate code what packages sold um um what was actually the business mix in terms of leisure corporate conference however you divided up every hotel divides that up differently mm. but i suppose it's your segments um and looking at that and seeing okay well, first of all, how did we get that business last year? Did we do anything in particular? And again, as Lisa said, looking, well, how's the market looking this year? And what, what are the trends? And what's happening with football matches and concerts and events and all that? All of that, I suppose, is it's specific to your local area. And once you have a feel for that, then you can kind of say, okay, well, what's, what's our strategy? What's our plan? What are our promotions? And I know we're going to get onto that, Richard. So... Yeah, look back first and then mm. kind of set about, well, how are we going to achieve our budget Actually, or beat last year or whatever whatever our target is? Just thinking, uh, and, and sometimes not even last year, it might be that like if you're in a big conference hotel, 
um, you know, there are there are cycles in conferencing. So, you know, you might be having an event coming or an event or a conference coming into your area every two years, every three years, every five years. So, you know, you, you need to be cognizant of all, all that as well. Um, so it's it's like, a, you know, having the history um, and having an eye on on, you know, the pipeline as well. Mm. Uh, but it's a, yeah, a, a very good place to start. And that was point two, actually, in the in the top ten tips blog um, was about looking at segments. So you know you, you've made that uh, point very well there. That you know you need to cast your eye over where your business is coming from. I I guess what people who are listening to this might be thinking, you know, busy um, hotel marketing directors and sales directors is they're coming into their very busy season now. They're probably rushed off their feet. People are taking summer holidays as well, um, including them. And they were like, well, I don't have time to be planning for autumn now because I'm too busy doing operational stuff um, as it stands. Um, but how would you suggest they they go about that? I mean, you know, put a day, you know, a day's planning a week to try and um, drive the autumn business. Um, okay, so as the sales and marketing person in the room, I would say <laughs> that uh, you know, generally uh, you're sales and marketing department won't be involved or shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't be involved in the operation so uh so you really are always looking at the pipeline now granted there's always the last minute you know we may have a few gaps to fill but uh ideally you know you should be almost fully focused now your rooms are sold for the summer uh you've got your strategy in place for that 12 months two years three months ago you've got your tactical offers in place to fill your gaps so you really are looking at at uh, the autumn season more than anything um, and i suppose that's where your operations team rely on the sales department and partners like arrow to be looking at the 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 future pipeline so um i suppose our part of our job in in arrow is to make sure that if our hotels aren't thinking about autumn now and this is the whole purpose of doing our blog and the podcast is that we plant the seed that we really need to be now mm. and then our account managers are you know are engaging with our clients now to say look what are we doing for autumn um and you know we start that that ball rolling basically and rather than framing this as a, a problem season let's look at it the other way i mean do you think autumn presents any great opportunities for business uh yeah i take that one when i listen <laughs> um yeah, Richard, I think just to answer your previous question, like, I think you have to find time to look at these things. But what I would say is, um, in my mind, you know, the time you need to look ahead, you've three months of data to look at. And you look at the top level stuff, don't get overly complicated down to the minute detail of you know, how many rates on a particular night on a particular month war uh, a b and b versus a room only like look at it from a holistic level to get an idea of the trends that are happening that happened in that month and that takes a couple of hours you know uh, uh, an hour a month or something like that if you want to look ahead at headline figures mm. because you just need to be have enough information to make decisions on if you get if it gets overly detailed into the data, you actually won't know what you're looking at and what the decision should be. And I, you know, that kind of comes from, you know, at a GM level, you're kind of going, okay, tell me, tell me what's going on here. Tell me what it was. Okay, let's make a few decisions. What what actions can we implement? What packages can we get out there? What markets do we need to target? They're kind of the simple headline questions you want to answer. So just look at data that will give you those, help you answer those questions. Um, but certainly, I've always looked at particularly September as a month and October as well in the last few years. They are months you can make up a bit of, if you get some momentum going, um, you can make up maybe for a month that wasn't great this year. Mm. Particularly April wasn't a good month this year, but Easter, the way it shifted and the way it played out. Uh, May and June seem to be good everywhere. July is a month that, well, this year is completely different, I think, for, for a lot of properties. So you can get a bit of momentum going in in September, October um, that you could make up. So they're not necessarily problems. They're just months you need to be on because mm. if you know a, a variance in occupancy and a variance in ADR, 
on those months can really hit you, particularly if you're a seasonal hotel. And those are months that necessarily mightn't be very profitable. They might only be break even. Or in some cases, when you get to the latter half of the year, you might have months there that's actually loss making every year. And it's just about minimizing the losses on your bottom line. So that's where driving revenue and occupancy helps with that break even or, yeah. you know, making a bit more money. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't see them as problems. I think there's definitely, but you've got to be organized and you've got to be ahead of the game, I think, for those months. Well, that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. So that's good to know. Um, and like, we know that hotel guests are, are always sensitive to price. I mean, you mentioned about varying ADR there. Seamus, you know, and without getting too granular about it, you know, what sort of rate strategy should hotels consider as they move from summer into autumn? Uh, oh God, Richard, how long how long do you have for this one now? <laughs> uh, this could go anywhere. I think. Um, so I suppose what I'm getting at, Seamus, is it's not just a matter of slashing price because no, summer's over. No, 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 not at all. Um, again, I'll come back to look at your segments. Look at who you're targeting, um, how you get to them, and um, how you get in front of that audience, and what what you're presenting to them. So I, I wouldn't necessarily naturally rates reduce as you move into the off season. Mm. Um, you know that that's a natural thing in any in any hotel. Um, so you you would naturally amend your rates, or that would be part of your overall rate strategy. But I, I think. The more important thing is to present, you know, value, packaging up things that 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 work for you as a business. So, you know, think outside the box. Can we do something different this year? Create little hooks that catch the audience's attention, but they also need to be quite practical and implementable from an operations perspective in the hotel. Mm. And they also need to be things that you as a hotel do well. So you know, don't just come up with something because the sales and marketing department think it's a great idea when actually when the guest rocks up in October, everyone in operations is like, what is this? How do we do this? And it turns out to be, you know, something you get a couple of letters on from a guest that was on that package. So, James, I don't know what you're implying. I would never have done this. <laughs> the creativity of a sales and marketing department can be uh, incredible, Lisa. <laughs> just not practical. <laughs> From an operations perspective, but no, I I think you know have get, get define who you are, what you are, and you know what are your, you know I suppose what are your selling points? What what new things can you go out there with this autumn? Put them into a package. You know I think particularly this year there seems to be a bit of pushback on price. Um, that's natural I think as as, as pricing increases. So giving that value or perceived value um to a guest and focusing on the ex experience side of things mm. will get people to book and it's a hook and then i suppose that's where your digital marketing comes in getting those getting that lined up getting your budgets for digital marketing lined up and engaging with your you know the team in arrow or whoever whoever uh does your digital marketing and and getting the information to them early so they can get it lined up and get it out there and I suppose as well, you're kind of like, I mean, in an ideal world, you, you you probably have a good base in now for the autumn season. And in a not ideal world, if you don't have a good base in now, you've got to get it. Uh, so so that's it, it depends on where you're sitting, I suppose, as a, as a property. If you've got a base in, it's about just getting to that real comfort level. You know, you're going to get some last minute business. But, you know, what can you do to 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 fill any potential gaps? And and if you don't have your base in, that's where you have to probably get creative, more creative, and probably put a, a harder push in terms of your promotions to make sure you 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 get mm. a base so that you're not in a situation where you know you're having to try and flog things last minute, which is you know never you know yeah. never where you want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I also I think Lisa, on like this year, I think above all years, you can't just do what you did previous years because your competitors are not are going to do more yeah. and you do need to and it doesn't have to be massive i think you don't have to reinvent the wheel but there needs to be maybe some of that creative thing of the marketing piece <laughs> but definitely i think this year hotels are going to be quite 
aggressive with mm. promotions and activity and packages okay. and that um, to get to, to get um, that domestic business in, you know, and there might be hotels who weren't aggressive in previous years because they didn't have to be, and now this year they suddenly are, and we yeah. see people coming out of the trap that, that never caught mm. our radar, came across our radar. And Lisa, I mean, the Hayfield family collection, the, the hotels I mentioned earlier, you know, would four and five star hotels, really good um, Irish hotels. They would be typical Arrow clients. Um, would you be careful about how much you contacted the existing database for, for those hotels? I, I mean, in, I, I'm talking about not bombarding them with stuff or, you know, being selective with what you send them. Yeah, I think, you know, like you're, for me, you're, and I think it's for, probably for every hotelier, your your past guests are your most, should be your most loyal customers, and they should be people that you treat with the kind of utmost respect. It's so hard to get new business, as we all know, and this is whether it's corporate or, or leisure um, or through a tour operator, but those, you know, the hotel business is all about relationships. Um, and they are long term relationships um, because the, the, you know, the business, you know, you, you, you need your constant supply and your past happy guests are your your best customers. They know what you have to offer. They're loyal to you. So, yeah, uh, we, you know, in, in the past and, and even today with uh, with other clients, you know, leveraging your 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 past guest database should mm. in my head is they are the first people you should think about in terms of any promotion and how are you going to uh, offer them something that rewards their loyalty uh, and will encourage them to to book you when when you need them you know mm. and we had like we had a an enormous database of past guests and so much goodwill with the hayfield collection that that would have been the first port of call if there was any uh, kind of need would be to to uh, offer that database something really special and unique to them that we know would resonate with them that would make them feel um valued uh but uh, but but equally that uh, would serve the hotel as well uh, when when it needed the business so you have to be very very careful about not bombarding um your your past guests and there's lots of different ways to contact people now um so that when they do see an offer or something come specifically to them personalized to them they know it's worth looking at and that's you know you want to have the little beep beep beep, beep okay i'm gonna i'm gonna open this and that's yeah. if you can achieve that then you you know if it, it, that really does work right i'm sure there are people who were in your position lisa you know in hotels listen to this and but like, oh, actually, uh, this is all great. Um, but the hotel budget was set in the end of 2023. For example, we don't have any advertising budget for September, October, November. Um, what would you say to somebody, you know, if if there is if they've had no ad spend allocated for that period, but they're now they're thinking actually it would be great to run some social media campaigns, uh, for example. Um, I think most hotels would uh, would have the budget put aside okay. anyway, or they definitely should have it. And, you know, often in, in Arrow especially, um, you know, we'd encourage people to only, only leverage that budget when they need it. So, you know, a lot of hotels would probably, depending on their location, a lot of hotels would probably have uh, ads turned off right now because they're nearly full um and they don't they don't need it so i suppose it's about you know using the budget at the times of year that you need need it and when i say they'd have them turned off now now i mean they'd have them turned off now for the summer months but now is the time to think okay we're going to put everything behind autumn and and winter now so that like you know if you're looking at pmax campaigns they take six weeks to learn so there is no point in setting up a campaign in september for mm. for autumn you know, you need to have it up and running. The, the the team here at Arrow need to do all the learning and tweak it so that it's optimized for the period when people are going to actually start to to be booking. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's a, that's an excellent point. Um, well, I think 
um, as you said, people hopefully would have budgets set aside, but it, it's, um, I think that that sort of answer would be make enable anybody to make a very strong case to say, well, look, you know, give us another 300 euros for a PMAX campaign in September and I can deliver you 10 times that in bookings. You know, I mean, that that's the kind of level that we're looking at. But yeah, I mean, that's a really good point about starting now um, for those campaigns that need to learn. Um, so as ever on podcasts, the time has absolutely flown and um, I, we tried, I'm trying to keep this series, you know, short and snappy. So people can listen to it on the way to work or while they're doing a on the treadmill or whatever. So I just finish up um, with a question to each of you. <laughs> What's your top tip for autumn occupancy? I let you go first with this one, Shane. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lisa. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. It is one thing, uh, I suppose. You know that, and you know you're you, you're coming from general management. Seamus, you're across all areas of hotels. You know, Lisa, you're specific to the sales and marketing department. So, you know, it'd be interesting to hear what you say. So, um, I think my top tips, I'm going to be through Richards. I can't give you one, it's too hard. Oh, okay. um, you caught me off the guard there, but off guard. But I think um, there are, you need to get a few things right for the autumn, for any time of the year. And I think it's not necessarily that you need massive spend. I you need you do need to spend a little, and I think anything on digital is so measurable, and it's really good to as a GM or you know director of sales and marketing or anyone to say, okay, well we spent this, and this is what we got back. So that that for me is always a no-brainer to, to a certain extent. You have to spend it now to get it back, okay, in in, in a couple of months and all that, but. Definitely try and getting some budget aside for that. And it doesn't need to be crazy money either. Um, but definitely your socials are very important, having a good social presence. And when I'm talking to clients, I'm talking about, well, defining your brand. Who are you? What are you? Redefining it as well. Now having that conversation for your winter season, getting your packages right, getting the pricing and the value of those packaging right. Packages right is key. And then getting that out there through your digital all your digital channels and again my i suppose the main thing really is not to forget about your database they are as lisa has said that is absolutely key we forget about them sometimes in hotels and it's not necessarily hey here's a 20 percent discount it's more you know hello we're still here here's mm -hmm. a great value package sort of a thing you know and um they would be my tips to for, for, for the autumn season in general that's an excellent summary and also give you quite a nice bit of time to think of yours there, Lisa. Yes, yeah. Well, my, all I'm going to say is probably, uh, yes, I agree with everything Seamus has said <laughs> and uh, probably just read the Arrow blog because <laughs> it's all in there. Um, I think, like, if I was looking this year and thinking it's going to be a tough year, um, you know, it's going to be hard to get to budget. It's going to be hard to do as well as last year. It would probably be going back to basics to think look is there something we can offer something that's unique about our property uh the creativity the dreaded creativity uh Seamus, but you know uh, sometimes all you know it's just to say like you know are we a food destination are we a spa destination is it golf uh you know what what is unique about us and how can we leverage that and create the awareness around it? And I suppose the, the other thing I suppose is just the, you know, the world is so visual now um, and to, you know, really try to create now like eye catching visuals, um, you know, which, which can be done with the, 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 the digital marketing team and Arrow and our designers. Um, but, you know, it's, it's so, you're so bombarded now. So you have to have something that stands mm -hmm. out uh, so I think, you know, it, 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 it's really to try and come up with something that is aligned with your brand, uh, but will catch the eye, you know, right. and, and that takes time. That doesn't mm. happen overnight. That will take a bit of toing and froing with your design team to make sure that you get it just, just right. And then I suppose it's to, then what you do is you multiply that out by every single channel, you know, from your website to your socials to uh you know what you've got in the bedrooms you know across you, you you're just uh, creating that promotion and using those visuals in every possible touch point okay that's great well 
Um, I think that would provide any hotel with uh, a great amount of food for thought um, and just lots for them to get their teeth into. So thank you very much for all that. And um, we'll uh, let the listener go away and get cracking with their, with their awesome campaigns. Yeah, and, and it, it probably there's a load of stuff that we've forgotten. So please uh, feel free to comment and give us, uh, you know, um, feedback on, on what, what, uh, what you'd recommend, because obviously the people who are out there in the field are the, are, are, are the real experts. For sure, yeah. Look, we're always delighted to hear from people. You know, you can contact us via our website. Um, my email address, again, will be in the podcast description. So, yeah, please do get in touch. We'd love feedback. Seamus, Lisa, thank you very much. And we'll talk again, I'm sure. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Seamus.